What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. This is the Action Figure Grader, also known as John, and I've got some more vintage Star Wars items that have sold at auction or buy it now situations on eBay that I wanted to cover, including one no sale, as you see in the thumbnail for this video. I was really surprised that it didn't sell and a loose graded example did sell. So we'll compare and contrast the list price for the one that did not sell with the one that sold at auction that was loose graded. But uh, if you're new to the channel, welcome. I try to cover different prices for different Star Wars lines, everything from the vintage Kenner stuff all the way to recent vintage collection items. And if you're new to the channel, just please consider subscribing. For all my existing subscribers, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to leave a like for this video. Let's go ahead and dig right in. Uh, first of all, we got an AFA 80 20 back G FET offer. And this one had a slightly yellowed blister, as you can see. This is the hammerhead with that awesome Boba Fett offer sticker. I just picked up a 20 back Death Star droid. Uh, this is labeled the 20 back G. Now, I did get clarification on this one because uh, th there's two different guides. There's the Kellerman guide, which most people ascribe to and like a lot, but it's, it's kind of outdated as it relates to some of these different offer stickers that are out there. It's not complete. But AFA and CAS do use the Keller, Kellerman matrix as it relates to 20 backs. So I have a 20 back G Death Star droid and it has rounded edges. But if you look at some of the guides that are online, they would label this one as the 20 back E. And I, I want to give a shout out to Jeff E. He is a longtime heavy hitter collector within the vintage Star Wars community. He kind of helped recreate the 20 back guide. And uh, he reached out to me after my last market update video with the 20 back G Luke X-Wing and tried to explain why uh, there there's might be some discrepancies relative to the online information versus what AFA and CAS use. And he kind of explained it and basically said, look, you know, there's all kinds of different offer stickers. There's offer stickers that are either rounded like this and like my Death Star droid. Uh, there's also uh, squared off rectangular edges to that yellow sticker. But uh, the discrepancy really relies in the fact that AFA and CAS use the Kellerman matrix, and so they're going to label this as a 20 back G, even though some of the guides online will list this as the 20 back E. I hope that made sense, but thank you again to Jeff for the detailed information. Uh, he is way smarter on this stuff than I am, especially on these early card backs. So uh, it was great to, to get that information from him. Thanks again. But anyway, this 20 back labeled G, FET offer hammerhead, was a, a yellowed AFA 80, and it did sell at auction. The subgrades were all straight 80s, and you can see the Y dash NM. And for those of you who are kind of new to this stuff, the Y just means that it's yellowed. It's got a slightly yellowed blister. This is not nearly as bad as maybe some of the ones you see for the Return of the Jedi line, the U.S. card backs. Those obviously turn yellow really easily. Um, it's not that common to see these 12 and 20 backs start to yellow. It all comes down to storage and just other kinds of factors, how hot uh, the environment was that these were stored prior to grading. But it is just very slightly yellowed, so that probably held the price up a little bit. But it still sold for 907 18 bids plus $14.50 shipping. It's a pretty decent price. It was punched with no price sticker, but a, a very nice item. Uh, next up was an ungraded 21-back Boba Fett. And I know that a number of you reached out to me and said, hey, is this legitimate? Because for a while there, it was kind of hovering around 2500 or so. And I'm not the guy to ask on these early card backs. You never know. I mean, when you start get talking about Boba Fett, it, it's so tempting for a lot of these scammers to fake it. But me just looking at it uh, with, with an untrained eye, so to speak, it looks legitimate. It's got the target price sticker there. Uh, the blister looks fine. The card back looks legitimate. Here's the back of the card. The only thing that made me question it is that, you know, it, it seemed like it was maybe a little bit too glossy and, and some of the color down here was a little bit too bright. But, you know, it it's very it's most likely a legitimate car back just based on the sales price. You will also note that there's a thumb hole punch or a, a tack punch right next to the power droid box. So someone probably hung it up and, um, you know, a long time ago. So that probably held the price down a little bit and you can see also on the Star Wars logo there's two little thumb hole where someone put a thumb not a thumb hole but a thumb tack hole where someone hung this up on the wall most likely still unpunched though beautiful example 
nice crystal clear blister that's in fantastic condition. So, you know, all in all, I, my guess is that it would probably grade at best to 75, mainly because of those holes. There is some kind of light creasing, spider veining, things like that. Now, the sales price, $4,935. I'm assuming that this item is legitimate. It's not a really good fake, uh, but it, it does seem uh, like a pretty decent deal relative to some of the very, very high-grade examples that we've seen sell either on eBay uh, or in Facebook or in the Hakes auctions, things like that. So, But I, I think because of those thumbtack holes, it probably would hold it back to at max like a 75-grade. Anyway, $4,935 took that one home. Uh, next up, let's dig into what I talked about at the beginning of the video. This is the 7-inch Takara made in Japan Chewbacca. Very rare figure, very tough to find, and it's uncirculated 85, so someone took this off of a card and displayed it with the instruction booklet along with the factory sprue that has the bowcaster. Now, the bowcaster comes in two pieces, but as you can see, the cross portion of the bowcaster with the uh, sniper kind of uh, scope had fallen off of the sprue. So I'm sure it's held into place with like a little frame going over top of that section. But, you know, it's it did fall off post grading. And here's the figure. It's a very large figure, very kind of rudimentary in terms of style. But these came back out in, what, 1978, I believe, 1978. And they were made in Japan by a company called Takara, who's still around today. Here's the label on it. You can see the JP there. That just means that the country of origin for these was Japan. It sold for $736 and change, plus shipping at auction on August 20th, 36 bids. And then this one did not sell, which I was a little surprised by because it did have quite a number of watchers on it. This is an AFA 85 mint on card for the same figure. 85, 80, 90 were the subscores. Here's the back of the card back. You got to look at this. Just incredible box art for this Japanese mint on card 7-inch Chewbacca. These blisters are known to be very fragile, but this is like a time capsule type of piece because it's in fantastic condition. But it did not sell. It did not sell. It, it was listed for $1,900 plus $7.95 shipping. And I, I'm going on memory, but I believe back in the March Hakes auction, there was one that was very similarly graded. It might have even been lower graded than this. That was listed at, uh, or that the final sales price at the Hakes auction was around $2,800. Again, I'm going on memory, so don't quote me on that number. But I was, I was very much expecting this item to sell for kind of $2,000 to $2,500. No bids whatsoever. Just a real shock there. Um, and But what an incredible item. I'm sure at some point it'll sell somewhere. But uh, just really surprised that given that the uncirculated 85 loose graded sold for $736, that the AFA 85 mint on card with a clear blister did not sell at $1,900. So take that for what you will. But I just thought I'd share that information. Next up is a very rare Empire Strikes Back six-pack with the yellow background. Um, these were sold, apparently, um, it's not labeled on the label as to which department store it was sold at, but it's qualified 80 plus. Qualified meaning that it's no longer mint and sealed box. Either the tape had been cut or the tape uh, fell off of this item, but it was unused content, so it did receive this qualified designation. It's a blue label from... AFA. This is a very extremely rare six pack, uh, especially to, in the condition that it's in. But it includes Darth Vader, a Hoth Stormtrooper, the ATAT -AT driver, the Hoth Rebel Soldier, IG 88, and Yoda. So, kind of a mishmash of different Empire Strikes Back characters. That sold for $4,251 and change, free shipping, 34 bids on August 21st. So, just a data point there for an item that you don't see. Come, this is the first time I personally have ever seen this item come up for sale at auction. I'm sure it's been on Hakes at some point. Uh, not this one particularly, but, you know, another example like this has, I'm sure, sold at Hakes in the past. But uh, this is my first time ever spotting one of these for sale at auction on eBay. And the price did not disappoint, but that's an incredibly rare six-pack that I thought I'd share. Uh, next up is an item that I covered in my What to Buy video, and I believe one of my Patreon supporters did end up picking this one up. Shout out to John I. This one was an AFA 85 Luke X-Wing. Uh, this had the brand new casing style. It was listed for 355 Canadian or 272 US dollars plus shipping. I think that price was really fair, quite honestly. Um, we've documented some that CIB, who is affiliated with AFA, They've sold one of these exact same grade, exact same COO. This was the Hong Kong variation 
for the Luke X-Wing, <clears throat> which is the most common. This also had the archival case upgrade. Just an incredible figure, very difficult to get in an 85 grade. Uh, but 272 I think, was a great price for that one. So congrats to John on that one. Uh, here's a power droid that was an AFA 85. Again, uh, I've already spoken about this in a past market update, but AFA has changed the casing style where it's now facing forward instead of to the side like this. So this is the older casing style. That sold for 150 plus 920 shipping. That's a pretty decent price and about in line with rare and AFA 85 loose gridded power droid cells. Uh, this is one I actually bid on, believe it or not, but this is the Hollow Cheeks Sand People or Tusken Raider. You can see the very hollowed out cheeks there uh, below the eye sockets on this Sand People. This is a very desirable variant that was, I believe, only came on later card backs, usually Return of the Jedi card backs. Dark brown paint, as you can see, very dark paint to that bandolier and to the mouthpiece and to his gloves. It was an AFA 85 Hollow Cheeks. It sold at auction for 622. I was the second highest bidder on it. Now I'm glad I didn't win it because I would have had to put that on PayPal credit and pay it off in six months because I don't have any money right now. But uh, uh, a beautiful item, there's no doubt. And I, I thought I'd make a good run at it. And we've we've documented CIB again, uh, sold exact same grade for this item. It sold it, I think, in the 700s or possibly even 800s a few months back. So uh, to, to get the same item in the same grade for, let's call it, you know, $150 to $200 off of that price, uh, was a great deal. And some of you may be asking about the cape. As you guys know, the Tuscan Raiders cape can discolor over time. I did reach out to this seller prior to the auction ending, and I said, hey, I just want to make sure that the cape doesn't actually have any browning or staining on it. That does happen. It does degrade even inside of blisters, mint on card figures. But he did reach out and said, no, that's just the shadows. It's There's no staining on the cape at all. And so I felt comfortable bidding on it. He had positive feedback, 100% positive feedback. So Anyway, I, I rolled the dice on it, and I did come in second, but uh, as I said, I'm, I'm pretty glad that I didn't win this item now because I would have had to put that on PayPal credit. Um, but anyway, a, a beautiful example and another data point for those of you looking for a Hollow Cheeks Sand People. Uh, next up was an AFA 85 Loose Graded Bosk. This is the Olive Head Flat Paint Hong Kong version. There is also a glossy paint version. This looks like the glossy paint to me. It's labeled the flat paint, but it looks very glossy. It's probably just because this seller is notorious for taking very, very good photos. Um, that one sold for $304 on 27 bids. So loose graded, high grade Bosks, 85 and above. They, they command big, big money. I did document a U90 that sold for over $600 earlier this year. Um, I, I know of another one that sold last year that was a U90 with the the updated case style that sold for 660 so uh, loose graded boss are very very pricey and i think it really it comes down to the back of the figure the backs of the bosks because of all that white there they do kind of scratch up really easily you can see even on this afa 85 example it's got a little bit of uh, scratching right here as well as down here on the strap so you know uh, just one of those figures that's very tough to get in a very very high grade and people are willing to pay up for it Next up was a Tri-Logo Light Blue Boba Fett, uh, another beautiful figure. Uh, this one was the Painted Knee Unpainted Dart. And what am I referring to for those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about? Obviously, this is the Unpainted Dart. There is also a Painted Dart version. And then this little shin piece here that covers the front of his shin can either come painted or unpainted. And that one is the painted version, and there's all kinds of different combinations for that. There's also different kinds of colors for the for the belt and, and uh, all of those kind of different tri-logo Boba Fett's can be found. Uh, and the U UKG especially labels those accordingly. Uh, that one was UKG 80%. That sold for 350 pounds, which is 412 US dollars. That's pretty much in line with market and where, the, where they've been consistently selling. I'd say on the low end, you might get it for as low as 300 pounds, um, which is about 350 US, but 350 is probably about right. Uh, next up was another example that I really was thinking about, and, um, you know, it just, the, the starting list price was kind of outside of my comfort zone, but this is the very tough to find 31 back A, IG-88, AFA-80, clear blister, it was punched, but this is the debut card. I've got a 32 back A that's an AFA-75+, plus, but this one would have been a nice upgrade to get the debut card in a higher grade clear blister. The starting price was $7.99. I expected it to sell for closer to a thousand bucks, but only one bid. Uh, so that just shows you that the market has come down a little bit because 
uh, all day long six months ago, I bet this would have approached a thousand bucks. Maybe I'm wrong because of it, you know being punched versus unpunched. But certainly, if this was unpunched in an AFA 80, I would be shocked if it if it didn't hit a thousand bucks. But uh, 799 was the final sales price on that one. I think that's a pretty good buy though for a debut card IG88. Uh, here was an AFA 85 made in Hong Kong AT80 driver. Really nice example with the brand new case style from UKG. That sold for 110 pounds at auction, which is $129 US. That's a great deal, really great deal. Obviously, the global shipping program really hurts you when you got to pay basically 50% more to get it shipped from uh, the UK over to the US. So I think probably, I would think that somebody in the UK probably bought this one, but that's a really nice example of an AT80 -AT driver. Here was an AFA 85. Hong Kong COO TIE Fighter Pilot, another really nice example with the brand new case style. Volts of Yavin uh, was the seller on this one. It's a really trusted seller. I've bought from this seller in the past. This sold for $229.50, maybe a little bit high, you know, in my opinion. I think that $200 is probably closer to market value, but $229 took that one home. Uh, here was an AFA 85 Rebel Soldier. This one was listed for $200, best offer accepted. This was another item that I featured in a what to buy video maybe two weeks ago. It sat for a little while, but someone did finally uh, make an offer on that one and it got accepted. I think that was a pretty good buy though. Beautiful example of the Hoth Rebel Soldier in great shape. This was the Hong Kong COO, which is the most common. Uh, next up was a really nice one. This was a Blue Saber Luke Jedi, uh, the Hong Kong variation and a brand new case style. Looks really nice inside that new UKG case with those awesome accessory holders. Uh, that one sold at auction for 304 pounds or 358 US dollars for a UKG 90% Blue Saber Luke. That's a pretty darn good deal if you ask me. Uh, next up was another one I was watching closely. This one was a clear blister 65 back Yoda. Very tough to find on a clear blister. And you can see how clean that looks. And uh, it did have a Walmart price sticker. It was unpunched. That sold for $710 which again, I think that's down. You know, we, we, docu we documented a few of these clear blister Return of the Jedi Yodas over the last six to nine months that have sold for well higher than that. So I think that was a pretty good buy for a nice ungraded brown snake Yoda. Uh, next up, we had a Tri-Logo Palatoy R2-D2 sensor scope. This one was ungraded. And again, this was another one I featured in a what to buy video that sat and sat. And it finally did sell for $425 plus $20 shipping but it looked to be in excellent condition. So I think whoever picked that up got a pretty good deal on that. Anything R2-D2 seems to be going up in price pretty pretty regularly now. So uh, to get that one for 400 to 425, you know, it says it sold for 425, but he did have a make an offer uh, feature going. So maybe uh, someone got it for a little bit less. Okay, now you'll remember in my power of the force guide that we just covered earlier this week that a clear blister ATST driver sold for $430. Well, this one was also at auction and it also had a clear blister and uh, it sold for $192.50. And you're trying to understand why, why did it sell for less than half the price? Well, the reason is, is because somebody took a KB toy sticker and tried to cover up some litho damage on there. Now, the seller did disclose all that. I'm not trying to accuse the seller of anything. Uh, he, did, he did a great job of showing that the sticker was very clearly added after the fact, or the KB Toys employee took the old sticker off and then slapped on the $1 price sticker, but that doesn't make much sense because it has $3.79 scratched out with a dollar on there. If I had to guess, some unscrupulous person took, took the old price sticker off, saw that it scratched everything up, and then tried to cover it up unsuccessfully. But uh, anyway, $192.50 took that one home, and it still stayed relatively high despite that litho damage because... Again, it was a clear blister power of the force figure, which is not easy to find. Uh, next up was a Biker Scout laser pistol uh, from, the, from the Return of the Jedi. And this one was opened. It was labeled in the description as mint in seal box. Um, let's see. I thought, he, I thought he had mentioned it as being sealed, but uh, maybe I'm getting it mixed up with a different one. But this one was not sealed. As you can see here very clearly in the photos that this tape was no longer attached but it looked to be unused contents. Uh, it still has the strap going around uh, the handle there of the Biker Scout pistol. So this would be a qualified grade type of item, but a very nice one in great shape overall, really. Uh, very tough to get these in clean condition just because of all the kind of the edges to that cardboard. And as you can see in that lower left-hand corner, there is a tear, a small tear going on there. But uh, this is probably like a 75 grade, maybe an 80 if someone's being generous 
qualified, of course. That sold for $192.50 plus shipping. I thought that was a pretty good deal. To finish things off, I got a couple of loose graded last 17 figures, and the first one is a uh, UKG 80% Luke Skywalker Stormtrooper. We've documented so many of these here recently. They're all selling left and right, both in the U.S. and the U.K. This one sold for 392 pounds, or about $462. That's basically right in line with some of the other examples we've seen sell here recently. And then finally, I thought this was a pretty decent deal. This was a UKG 85% older style case yak face. But it is an 85%, and it sold for a pretty decent price, $544 uh, plus $945 shipping. This was located in the U.S., US even though it was a UKG-graded item. And like I said, I mean, we just talked about some of these on CIB and some other examples that sold for over double this price. So to get a UKG 85 older, older case yak face for $544, that's a, that's a pretty good bargain in my mind. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this look at some more vintage Kenner Star Wars items that sold here recently. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll be back soon.